Hello Tutors, it's Gav and welcome to another one of my videos. Uh, this one is not going to be one of my usual ones. Uh, it's not uh, anything figure painting, modelling related, not a ramble on any of those subjects, not a shout out. Although it is a shout out in one, one respect. Um, this is uh, a topic uh, quite close to my heart uh, and I understand that it's probably going to wind some people up you know controversial wise and if you are one of those people just please move on uh, it, th this is uh, I've recently uh, received after a 25 year wait uh, my general service medal uh, for with Northern Ireland CLASP uh, for my service in Northern Ireland Ulster the province whichever I wanted to call it at the time uh, so, you know, if 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 you if you're one of those that, that are offended by that subject, and please just move on. You know, um, it, I don't want any negativity. Uh, this is this is just me. Uh, I've got enough head problems as it is. Uh, but uh, a lot of people helped, or some some kind-hearted people got me here, uh, and uh, I wanted to thank them and uh, remember those that uh, that never came back. Cheers. Right guys, uh, this is a video that you know is going to be a car crash as I call them. Uh, I will probably be joking on my own tears by the end of it. Uh, um, again, anybody that stumbles across this video that doesn't realise, um, I mention it enough in my normal videos and people are heartily sick of it. but. I've got um, severe post-traumatic stress disorder, I've got severe deep trauma and severe clinical depression and uh, not through my army service I actually wrong things up to me as a kid uh, and uh, my head exploded uh, a few years ago uh, trying to keep things in a box. So before we start with anything I'd just like to say if you have trauma uh, mental health problems, whether it's through military service or just in day-to-day -day civilian life, please talk to somebody. Find somebody because people will listen to you. It doesn't have to be a, the Samaritans, although they do sterling work. Uh, it doesn't have to be a service charity if you're a ex-serviceman. But please find somebody to confide in because as you know I talk about my mental health I try not to because I know it's a it's a figure painting and modelling channel. Um, but I've said to you guys since I've deteriorated quite badly, um, it's a way of if I if I, what my figure painting and my modelling keeps me in the fight and the people I've met through having a YouTube channel. I've met some absolutely fantastic people that do their best um, to keep me from doing something really stupid. Um, when you've got mental health problems, you hold on to things. Um, as I keep going back to uh, those flowers behind me, little box behind that, that's all I've got left of my little lad Barkley, my little pop. Who passed away 10 years old, I know, I've said it before, I'm not making apologies for that, but what I'm trying to say is you hold on to things. My wife obviously, my wife often gets left out of this and she deserves a lot more praise than she gets from me, uh, but you do get selfish sometimes with mental health and uh, that little lad up there meant a hell of a lot and he was a rock I held on to. Now one of the other major rocks I held on to uh, Although I don't, I'm not, I'm too smashed in the head to be part of any ex servicemen's associations or regimental associations, but this is the cap badge. Ooh, <laughs> trying my best. The 1st Battalion, the Staffordshire Regiment. The Prince of Wales is. <sighs> I 
and for somebody who went in the army smashed up <laughs> I've got a fat head now it's not still not like it used to <laughs> this is my original berry um, somebody would be in with a smashed up head not belonging to anything not wanting you know not just adrift I didn't spend years and years I wasn't a lifer it was just under four years but I've, it was the proudest moment of my life I hope your wife done it so getting married as well <laughs> but being allowed to be part of this cat badge it really was something special Ooh, I should keep turning this off but if we do this we're never going to get anywhere and uh, serving in Ulster just on a purely selfish reason you felt for once in your life you were somebody doing something special but getting back to the <laughs> getting back to the reason for this video uh, I did my tours I, I did a the, the battalion was on a two year tour um, and I'd come from the territorials a uh, big batch was that and uh, most of us had joined up specifically to get through the back door we, um, and, and join the 1st Battalion and um, we, we did a long tour um, nothing happened to me you know uh, I, I came through it absolutely fine as did, as did most of the lads we did have some lads wounded later on uh, and uh, I believe we had some lads wounded before or on, on, on previous to I can't remember, I've, I've, I've smashed up but anyway uh, you get a general service medal uh, with uh, it's called the general service medal and uh, with a Northern Ireland clasp uh, the clasp is because the general service medal is for conflict uh, so it, uh, some people call them policing actions whatever the reason it's basically British soldiers sailors and airmen getting killed Raw Marines, I'm sure I'm never sure if the Royal Marines class themselves as Navy or I'm sure they class themselves as Royal Marines. But uh, getting killed in, in operations, so the likes of Malaya, Cyprus, Borneo, Sarawak, Kenya, uh, I'm going to miss people out now, Aden. Uh, but for me, it was Northern Ireland. So you get this medal ribbon and it'll have a different clasp on saying what, what, what your service was. They're all the ones that never reached the, particularly reached the, the uh, TV screens. Uh, in Ulster, when our guys were murdered, I just killed, I call it murdered, but when they were murdered, they had little grainy passport photographs put up, usually at the end of the news, just before the sport, and you'd have some big smiley faced anchor person going, Oh, and three soldiers were killed in Northern Ireland today, or three police officers. Never forget the Royal Ulster Constabulary, and then later the police service in Northern Ireland. They're comrades, and they fell. They fell in their hundreds as well. Um, and they glibly then go on to, and today, such and such won 3 0. You know, it, it was nothing. Uh, and I never got my medal for whatever reason, admin, admin reasons, I never received my medal. I had the medal ribbon, so when we went on parades or, or we had to have our number two dress on, I'd have the ribbon on. Um, but, you know, as people and then the crows below me that might have been there at different times, they got theirs. And then I'll just get, you know, oh, well, whatever, it'll appear, it'll appear. And it never did. <laughs> Uh, and as I was walking out, the, not so much walking out the gates the last day, but you know, you just stick two fingers up to them. You know, if you don't want to give me my medal, I'm not going to really beg for it. And I've been like that for 25 years. But 
more and more recently, one, well, it's an age thing, you get older, you, I keep saying you hold on to different rocks and I probably missed that as I was blarting away back then. But, but my service in Ulster and my service with One Stafford is, in my smashed up head, is something I hold on to. Um, you know, it, 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 it just does, I just, it's just something, you know, I hold on to ever, ever so dearly. Uh, and yet, as I say, I don't belong to any veterans associations. I, I don't, I, I just, you don't see me, apart from obviously <laughs> to the world on YouTube. Um, but on a personal level, it means the world to me. And uh, as I say, I didn't get my medal. I know I'm rambling, I'm sorry. I, I don't ever do scripts, you know what I'm like. I just say it as it is, and of course, it with them. Mash dead. <laughs> I forget stuff as quick as it enters in my head. But I never got my medal. I said I'd never apply for it. And then in the last couple of years, we've had more and more Northern Ireland veterans uh, find themselves being hounded by lawyers and, and solicitors. And time and time again, the government stands up and beats its chest and tells how brave our veterans are of all conflicts. And yet it allows constantly and and nobody's saying if there's got to be an inquiry there was inquiries and of course it's always oh it's a whitewash it's this and i don't i'm, I'm trying not to be controversial because i'm saying it from a veteran's point of view but this is why i applied for my cap, uh, cap badge, my medal in the end i kept seeing these these guys uh, ex-servicemen standing up on demonstrations saying enough's enough we're not going to be treated like that. 200,000 of us served in Ulster. You sent us there to protect the people. We did the best we could do. Guys, we're talking young 18, 19 year olds. They, you put, you, your failure of politics put us on the streets of our own country to protect the people. And we did the best we could do. And now you drag us through the courts, fat old blokes, after how many inquiries over this, that and the other, and you still drag us through the courts. And not just us, they've tried it with uh, Kenya, uh, Kenya um, making money out of the, the Mau Mau uprisings, and we're just easy targets. And it then meant something, well, it's, as I say, my service there always meant something to me, but the way the MOD had, had, had treated me over my medal, um, or, or not got me, I, I just, you know, it wasn't a regiment, it's just, you know, how it was. Anyway, I applied for it, and I got a, a terse letter back saying, you only served under 30 days. If you, don't, if you serve under 30 days in Ulster, you don't qualify for your, for your medal. And I hadn't, I'd served there, oh, I don't know, if it was 14 months, oh, I can't obviously remember how long it was. Um, and it was a complete lack of compassion and empathy from the medals office. I'd got a, I'd got a, they were dealing with an ex, well, they were called, they were called veterans now, well, they just used to be ex service, but we we'll call, call it veterans, because that's what seems to be the word there. Uh, dealing with a, a veteran, you know, I'm not just, I'm not one of these, but they made me feel like I was one of these stolen valour people, you know. Uh, all I wanted that medal for was to pay tribute to those that went out on patrol and didn't come back through the gates. People I never knew, but it doesn't matter, they're all comrades. And I applied for it a second time. And we furnished them with, my wife was great, she got all my records and all this type of stuff, my book they give you when you leave, all this type of stuff. And they actually told me that I shouldn't have had my general service ribbon and that, I shouldn't have, that was, that was an admin mistake. <laughs> You've got somebody telling you that you, they've served all that time and you're calling him a liar. <laughs> and I actually don't blame the MOD as, a, as an entity, I blame individuals that 
have a complete lack of empathy for the very people that they're supposed to represent. Uh, and I've been made really ill over it. Um, when you hold on to something like this, like this, and like the medal, well, not the medal, but the tour, you, when you're mashed, you hold on to it like a rock. And to say, and to have somebody call you a liar that you were never, after all the stuff, names and whatever, you no, know, you weren't there. You're lying without ever putting liar on the thing. Anyway, I, for the first time in years and years, and normally I just go and wiggle the back under my rock where I live most most of my time, but they they took it was the one it was the one thing they weren't going to take away from me, and I thought no you're you're not having this and I and one of the day I got the letter back saying again you're more or less a liar blah blah blah. I, I went online I thought who's I don't want to ask anybody for help, but I've got no choice now I, I don't know where else to go for this because they're just you, they wouldn't let you email them they wouldn't let you speak to them. You could only send, sorry, you could send an email, I should say, but you, you, there was no, there was no way were they going to call you. And uh, I put a, I went on the internet and found the Royal British, obviously we all know the, in the UK the Royal British Legion, so I, I went to, to look for the Royal British Legion. And uh, after one abortive start, I spoke to a guy called Scott. Don't know him, a Welsh guy, and. That bloke was golden. Um, I mean, I was really upset. As if I can get upset on a video to you guys, I can get upset on the phone quite easy. And uh, I was actually distraught, you know. And uh, and I explained I've got mental health problems, all the rest of it. And he said, it's not something I deal with, and I don't know how to do it, but I'm going to find, I'll speak to my line manager and see if we can find somebody uh, who can help you. And he put me onto a guy called Kenny from the Royal British Legion, uh, I, I don't even know the, the actual, it's his area, but I don't know if he's from my local branch or what. But Kenny is Royal Worcester Sherwood Foresters and Royal Army Medical Corps. And he has moved heaven and earth for me to get my medal. He doesn't deal with it. It's not something he, he's come across. You know, they're often dealing with ex-servicemen with housing problems, with financial problems, with mental health problems. Um, and he never stopped contacting me to see if, see what progress, progress I was getting. And he said, I know somebody, uh, again, not, she, she doesn't actually deal with your, I think geographical area, I think it's what it was, but I have got a contact and she, he says, I'm going to try this lady, a lady called Nikki. From Veterans UK, which I'm not sure if it's actually. I do believe it's it's part of the Ministry of Defence, but I'm not 100 percent sure. So if I've got that wrong, I apologise. Uh, as I say, I don't look up things. I'm not doing it on a script. It's just me to to a camera. And after months of being called a liar, of again, let's put this straight. They didn't put a liar on the thing, but that's what they were saying. Uh, she, within a couple of days, got back to me. So I spoke to the medical, medical office. Uh, they can't understand why you left it so long to get in contact with them. Uh, I've asked them for a, a written apology for, presume for the, the delay of the 25 years plus how you, this has been dealt with. Uh, Nikki, I can't thank you enough. Um, all we as veterans, or like anybody in any community want is, but you're representing us, and all we want to be shown is some empathy, some respect, and some compassion. You know, we're not asking for you to blow smoke up our asses, you know, tell us we're the greatest things in sliced bread, but when we come for help, is help medal office uh, I, I'm, I'm livid and I'm trying not to turn this into a, a you know one of them type of videos a rant, rant video or whatever 
but there was a complete and is a complete lack of. I got my medal yesterday. There was no written, handwritten apology. In fact, there was nothing apart from a receipt to say that you have to sign this and send it back to say that you've received your medal. Nothing. Which is just about how they've treated me from beginning to end. So they can go swivel. I really don't care. I've got my medal and two extremely kind people went out of their way to make sure I'd get it. So Kenny and from the Royal British Legion, Nikki from Veterans UK, this fat old veteran can't thank you enough. It means a hell of a lot. I'd just like to show you it. Uh, it comes in a little plastic container there. The lads, when they had them before, they just got a little cardboard box. <laughs> One up on you. Uh, on the other side, it says campaign service. Uh, on the top, you probably can't see it, but it says uh, Northern Ireland. There's a the Queen. And my service number and name. Rank is uh, is on is stamped on the side. I just want to say now, this isn't for me. This is a piece of tin. But for me, it represents all those that fell on Operation Banner. Whatever your regiment, whatever your corps, whatever your branch of service. As I say to the Royal Ulster Constabulary and the Police Service of Northern Ireland that we served alongside, to all our fallen. I humbly, humbly dedicate this to you. You were the best of us. And you didn't get a chance to get found old like me. With all the conflicts that we have, please, please remember the guys that fell on our back. Over 700 of them died. Thousands were wounded. And they deserve a damn sight more recognition than they ever got. I'd also like to do a couple of other quick thank yous. What a mess. <laughs> to my Mara, Greg Riley. You hear me mention Greg a lot on my videos, makes models to a very high standard. Uh, we all know that uh, Greg had his own fight with cancer, which he punched clean in the face, stamped all over and achieved victory, uh, came out of it victorious. Only in January, roughly, the, the, you know, I think, believe it is, we, we, we were told that he, he, he beat that battle. But he's had, to, he, we, we were on that Facebook Messenger and he has supported me all the way through this. He listen. He he get great paragraphs of rage, and he never stopped backing me up. His own sons in four five commando, but uh, he uh, he never stopped backing me up, and uh, so Greg. Mamara, thank you very much for that. I meant a lot. What well, does mean a lot? Uh, again, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Beetle, again, friends from YouTube, thank you very, very much for, again, 
there's been a few times I've unloaded on you guys as well. And to Eric Salvador, who occasionally pops up on YouTube, you know you are Eric, if you ever see this video. Thank you very much again for your kind words, and uh, it's really appreciated, especially for the things that you've gone through in your own life. So guys, um, trying to get <laughs> trying to get a grip. Uh, I was flapped in the army. I'm a flapper now. <laughs> it doesn't doesn't make any difference. Uh, um, I'm going to put some links. Just to, uh, I'm going to put. Hopefully, I'm going to try and get a link to Veterans UK and to the Royal British Legion. If you're a veteran and you have any kind of problems, they can't always promise to solve those problems, but they will. When you've got people like Kenny and Nikki, they will move heaven and earth to get help for you from other sources if that's what it takes. They don't leave anybody behind, and they didn't leave me behind. I'll go again. <laughs> so. If you are a veteran, we all know there are heck of a lot more service charities out there as well. I'm just saying, this is my experience. They will, when you've got people like those guys, they will move heaven and earth to help you. So don't just suffer in silence, whether it's to do with a head, whether it's you need I don't, I don't know if you've got a problem see these guys and they will do their best or representatives from those two organizations will do their best to get you the help you need uh, I'm also going to put um, a couple of op banner video links up now I don't have any connection to these guys uh, their views of their own. Um, there's a uh, some some videos that are put up on Op Banner by ex servicemen that feel ob like a lot of us fairly cheated um, by the politicians uh, and how the how the, they behave towards uh, Op Banner veterans. Uh, I'd like you, if possible, to watch those videos. Not not and as I say, don't. You know, if there are any things you don't like or whatever, I'm not. What I'm trying to say is, I wanted you to see it for the photographs because it wasn't all uh, terror. It's some, most of the times, like most military operations, it was sheer tiredness, <laughs> long, long hours, knackered. But my life, there were some laughs. <laughs> God, we had some bloody good times. Uh, But I just wanted you to see some of that. I put a couple of links to a couple of. They're only two or three minute videos. They've usually got some music. <laughs> I, always, I always wonder about the choice from time to time. <laughs> but you'll see our comrades from '69 up to 2007 when Op Banner was officially declared finished. It was a long time. Uh, and you, you'll see the evolution from the old tin pots, SLRs, up to the more stuff that I was carrying, the old, more rounded plastic helmets and all that stuff, you know. But if you want to know what it looked like to serve on Op Banner, uh, take a look at a couple of them videos because they show the best of it. They show you'll see lads, the usual, you know, multiples as we used to call them, photographs. That's, before they go out, uh, lads from different regiments. I've never been, I'm so proud of this one, but I'll shake the hand of anybody else, <laughs> uh, of any regiment or corps. It, I'm, I'm not, I'm not like that. I, uh, I was just bloody proud to be a part of it all. Uh, so if you'd like to look at those videos, please do, because you'll just see what it was like to be on Op Banner. And uh, I'm going to put, I might put two other links up. Uh, one, a guy's put a, 
a video up. It's fairly grainy. It's of its time, I believe, uh, around 1989. And it was a, there was an action called, well, it's called the Derriard's action, when Pyra attacked uh, a vehicle checkpoint, a permanent vehicle checkpoint, and uh, two soldiers were killed from the King's Own Scottish borders. Uh, but they were Toms and they were Jocks and that's a handy combination and they didn't roll over so please I would like you to check the Derry Yards action one out it's um, th there's some regimental music for the King's Own Scottish Borders played first like my regiment, it's been thrown in the waste bin of history. <sighs> They'll never have <laughs> politicians, it's all money, they'll never get it. They just won't get it. Anyway, uh, please watch that one. I, I can't remember, I, I'm going to try and remember when I do the link to put, you know, when people put the minutes on, on uh, when something they want you to watch something, or, or if you want to miss something. The first three, four minutes, it's regimental music while the lads are patrolling. Uh, but then it goes to the to the, um, the, the the jock that's that's actually doing the voiceover, uh, starts talking about the Derriard's action. Uh, he'll use a load of jargon you'll never understand, probably. Uh, as in military jargon for, for, for Ulster at the time. Uh, and it might seem, you know, long-winded, uh, but you, I wanted you to watch it because, again, you'll see the type of places we worked out of, uh, what we looked like. Uh, this was 1989. I, I joined myself. I was in myself about five years later, four four or five years later from that action. But it wasn't all about bricks and petrol bombs, so that could be bad enough. Uh, you had to be lucky as a serviceman, as a police officer out there, you had to be lucky every single day. The terrorists had to be lucky just once. So if you do, if you if you could, it's 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 a fairly you know you'll see links helicopters and 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 how it it for me it gives you a often a how we not just of that Derryard's action and the respect owed to the jocks that defended that post, but it sums up a lot of especially working in in the cuds as we called it in in the border areas uh, what it was like. Uh, and if I can, there's another video, uh, it was a TV documentary, uh, a, a woman reporter uh, spent one of the times, I think it was, believe it was with the Welsh Guards, uh, called In the Company of Men, and uh, again that was a early 90s, eight, late 80s, early 90s uh, video, of, and again you'll just see you know, even like the mundane places, how we type of things, where we lived inside the sangers and, and the accommodation blocks and whatever. Uh, you might be interested in that. So, guys, uh, thank you very, very much for watching this video. Uh, I couldn't have been more prouder to, to have this. Uh, as I say, it's not a it's not a gallantry medal. It's it's. Just to acknowledge uh, my own service on Operation Banner, um, but for me, it is as I've said earlier. It, it's so many men and women never got a chance to go old, to get fat and old like me. So many widows and orphans were left behind. So, thank you for the if you have stopped through, stopped and watched all this video. 
I apologise. Well, I don't apologise, actually. <laughs> it's, I've already said don't watch it if you're not interested in it. Uh, this just means a heck of a lot to me. It's the rock, one of the few rocks I've got left. Uh, and uh, yeah, I can't... I can't, again, I can't just say enough what, what it meant to, for the time that I spent. As I said, we were soldiers. Guys, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, I normally say the type of videos are coming up, but we all know the type of stuff we do, and I'm not going to start putting it on a type of video like this. So look after yourselves. Again, if you have any type of head problems whatsoever, it doesn't matter whether you wore a cat badge, or whether you're a civilian, whether whether you're 18 or 80, if you have head problems, please speak to somebody because you don't want to end up with it, your head blowing up like 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 this happened to me, and it gets really scary. So uh, please find somebody. If you're an ex-serviceman, you stood proud, stand proud again, and just tell somebody, don't bottle it up. People are a heck of a lot more understanding than you give them credit for. And as the saying goes, if you're a civilian, I don't give a monkeys. You need to, to open up whatever's in your head. You need to say it to somebody. Uh, people will go out their way to stand with you and help you but they've got to know you've got problems it took me 30 odd 40 odd years to say anything and now I'm <laughs> blarting his eyes out on a video to the world so just take a deep breath and do an I'm Spartacus stand up and just say I have these problems can you help me? Look after yourselves, guys, and we'll catch each other very soon on another video.